Hi, my name is Dr. Megan Paramacki Brown from Athabasca University, and I am principal investigator of the Stan Creek Regional Archaeology Project, where we are currently focused on excavations at the ancient Maya site of Alabama in the southern portion of the Stan Creek district of Belize. Uh, we believe the site to have been occupied primarily between around 700 AD and 900 AD. Today, I'm going to give you a short tour of the archaeological site, uh, the monumental core of the archaeological site, and uh, visit in at two of our excavations that are happening in the area during this 2018 season. And I hope you uh, enjoy it, and remember to follow us, uh, Stan Creek Regional Archaeology Project, on Facebook and Instagram, as well as our website at scraparchaeology.com, where you can follow our uh, weekly field blogs. So we start the tour out here in the orange orchard of the Alabama area and this is where um, commoner household groups would have been living. And then covered in this broadleaf forest right here is the main monumental core of the site where we will uh, go in and explore. So in this first part we are walking down into the B1 burrow pit um, which may have uh, functioned as a quarry area for the core fill of the monumental toll architecture, but also may have served um, water management purposes as well as augmenting um, the appearance of size of the largest building at the site, with the, which is the construction platform of Structure 3. So we come down here, we see bicycles uh, from some of the uh, local individuals who work with us on, on a daily basis. And so here you're, it's difficult to see, but this is a low area and this is part of that B1 pit. And as you come through here, if you can see up, that's to the tall, top of the tallest building at the site, which is, which is structure three. And we come up out of the bore pit and we'll be going up and over structure five. And this can all be followed uh, on the map we have on our website and in our reports. And we come down into the North Plaza where immediately we run into the backside of the uh, western structure of the ball court and I'll take you around to the north end where you can see the playing alley and the granite slab aprons of each of the buildings associated with the ball court. There are additional structures over there if you see the flat sort of horizon between the trees that's the top of uh, structure six. And here you can see part of the ball court. So you've got one building here with the granite slab aprons down into the playing alley. And just on the other side of these rubber trees, you get to the next building, the parallel building, with the aprons, the slabs of the apron, and then the playing alley in the middle. And this is where the Mesoamerican ball game would have been played. If we walk around to the east, again we're in the North Plaza, we run into Structure 10, which sits really in the middle of the site and divides the North from the East Plaza. And this is where some of our 2016 excavations are taking place. I'll do, I'll go up there with the video, but I'll be quiet for now and we can hear what the excavators are saying. It's been a bit wet lately <laughs> due to rain, as this is the start of the rainy season. So we're currently dealing with a lot of mud.
So basically what they're excavating at that site is a possible, or the staircase on the north side of the building. Um, but it's in very poor condition. Uh, many of the original blocks appear to be missing uh, due to a number of reasons. And this may also be a late addition to this building as it's really in much poorer, poorer um, condition and poorer construction quality than we expected compared to other buildings at the site. So if I walk around to the south side of Structure 10, we come into the East Plaza. And here we have another uh, set of excavations um, along Structures 1, 2, uh, which are two structure or building platforms atop of a massive construction platform that runs about 100 meters uh, east-west. Here's the, the East Plaza here. This is the um, south side of that Structure 10 where we were just at. And then in the plaza here, you'll notice a bunch of piled uh, debris uh, in, in all sort of like a serpent fashion. Um, what this actually is, is bulldozer push from the banana company that was in operation uh, at, at the site uh, in the 1950s and 1960s. So that's been one of the big challenges of work uh, in the Monumental Corps at Alabama, is the destruction that occurred because of the banana company. So here we are at the south end of the East Plaza, and if I turn to the west, you can, you can sort of see an outset stair of structure 2, I believe, and it goes all the way down that way, and we'll walk over there in a second. But then we come to this area, and there's a duplicate stair on structure one, but the crew right now is focusing on the dip between the two structures and if there's an access point or simply a face in this area. Well, are there any up here that you want to do? do? Oh, maybe that big, that flat one, that sort of, no, one and over? Yeah, that one. In the middle? Uh, okay. You're right in the middle, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we gotta pull it over. And then we gotta pull it over. No, no, nobody has to tell the person. Don't worry about it. Right. I'm taking video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get back. So again, they're tr there they're trying to just determine if they just have a lower part of the um, construction platform and will just hit the face of that platform, or if there's some kind of mini stair that gives you access to that lower section, and then perhaps even access off the back side, which would give access out into the settlement zone. So here we're just walking along the north face of structure two uh, and coming over towards the south plaza of the site, and then also the west plaza. Just to give you an idea of, an idea of scale, the largest structure uh, at the site is uh, structure three, or the tallest, I should say, and that's this structure right here. So when we first entered on the tour, that was the one we were on the back side, and here it is now. It's only about eight meters tall from the plaza level, but down from in that borrow pit, it's 10 meters tall. And here's the end of that long structure one, structure two building, which may have a ramp down the side. And then we basically go out into the south plaza 
And if we were to keep walking, we'd end up going along the causeway, which is now cut off by part of the orange orchard. And then this area, structures get significantly shorter, much smaller in scale. So for example, the buildings over in the north and east plaza, we have buildings 50, by, 50 meters by 50 meter base and a 100 meters by 30 meter base. So quite grand in scale, at least for here. <laughs> and then uh, when we come into the area of the south plaza, everything just shortens down. Things don't follow the same orientation anymore. Uh, and that could be because of a later addition at the site. A later, a later planning development that occurred. But those are one of, one of the questions we're trying to determine. This thing right here is structure 14 that has a big trench down the middle, um, which may be from the eight, excavation in the 80s that was improperly backfilled or then perhaps dug out by someone after that. Here's the low structure 13. And if we were to walk in this general direction, we pass through the South Plaza and out uh, onto the Sock Bay. But if we head back this way, we're gonna actually go into the West Plaza it's on the west side of structure three where we have large granite slab monuments that were found uh, lying end to end so placed end to end and when these were lifted in the 1980s little caches of materials um, were found beneath as well as uh, other stone monuments at the site where they dug beneath those they found little caches of things like limestone which is rare in the area uh, so limestone ornaments, jade beads, um, little things made out of clay, some whistles, things like that. So this is corner of uh, structure three, where we've had some um, material that's been removed in historic times, possibly to fill in ruts. In, uh, that have developed in parts of the orange orchard due to erosion or possibly for looting purposes. We can't actually be sure. It's an odd place to loot um, if that is the case. And if we keep going this way, we run into the stair, the um, west side stair of structure three. But just before we hit that is where we come into this granite, what we call the granite path. And what it is, is actually seven large slabs, natural slabs of granite from the same large boulder that have sort of split off. And they've been laid end to end. There's only four visible here, but there's two others where I'm standing, just below the dirt. And then another one that was moved um, to the exterior of the monumental core by some, um, some individuals in recent past. So we're not exactly certain of what this this path is for. If it is a formal path, um, it's oddly situated as it doesn't go in line with the staircase that accesses uh, structure three. But these are just all the interesting questions that we're wanting to figure out at some point, or perhaps we'll never know. <laughs> and here, if I go up the side of structure three, on top, what you'll see is a courtyard surrounded by three buildings positioned in a U shape. And this was likely some kind of residence, probably the residence of the top people at Alabama. And we don't really know for sure what their social status uh, would have been relative to say other elites at other Maya centers, we really don't know. So I'm standing right now on top, atop the south structure, looking down at the courtyard. And then over to the side there, there's the next building that runs along the east end, and then another along the north end. 
And this side here is open and has a stair going down towards the West Plaza. And oddly enough, also through this Eastern building, there's actually a stair going down towards the ball court as well. So I'll just take you now, that's sort of a mini tour of the site. I'll take you out to the orchard, um, just near where we started. And it gives you a nice sense of the atmosphere currently uh, in Alabama. May not have been the case in the ancient past. This might have been quite clear. Um, although there's debate over how clear uh, Maya, Maya uh, centers, communities would have been, or how many uh, trees were around. Part of the whole idea of forest gardens and managed, uh, managed forest environments alongside built environments. And we try not to slip on these very slippery granite slabs. And then we find ourselves back out in the orange orchard. And right next to another one of these uh, large pits, borrow pits, um, that surround the site. And then beyond that is the start of the uh, actual settlement that surrounds the monumental core. I hope you've enjoyed this tour. And please uh, follow Stan Creek Regional Archaeology Project on Facebook and Instagram. And you can also follow our blog posts on our website and access all of our reports and publications.